everyone. Welcome to Face to Face. We're so glad that you're able to join us. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at the text for Palm Sunday. I'm joined by Al O'Connell, Shelley Erickson, and Babs Kohler, and of course, you. So we are very glad you're here. But let's uh, do the most important thing first, which is invite the Holy Spirit into this process. So I'm going to ask Al if you wouldn't mind praying for us as we start. Absolutely. Thank you. Lord God, we welcome you into this space that we have prepared. We ask that you guide us in theory and, and ideal and try and deliver what you are speaking to us this morning. We ask that you grace the technology, let it run smooth, let it run strong, and remind us that whenever we gather, we do it to make sure that your voice comes out strongest. And so humble us, be peaceful within us, and guide us. In the Lord's name I pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Al. Okay, we're going to be looking at Luke 19, um, beginning with the 28th verse. This text will sound fairly familiar to you if you've been in church for any length of time. Uh, we start out, after Jesus had said this, I'm using the NIV version, by the way. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Tell them, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, what are you, Why are you untying the colt? And they replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Jesus said, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. So that is our text for today. And we begin with just a very general question. What of this text stands out for you? Crickets. When I read it the first time, it was like, where are the palm branches? <laughs> Agreed. You know, you see even the children's videos, you know, of Palm Sunday and Jesus entering into Jerusalem, and there's always palms. Mm -hmm. Luke left that detail out, right? Mark he and did. John have it, but <laughs> he did. Luke. And you wonder why. I thought it was interesting. He pointed out all the cloaks and coats that were laid down. Mm -hmm. I wondered if he had to do the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's it. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever like had your car stolen before, but I, I, I don't know if I would have just let it happen or like your new Nissan just suddenly like some people come, Oh, the Lord needs this. <laughs> and so whenever I hear the story, I'm just reminded of like how incredulous that that person must've been when they said, we need the cult. Don't ask questions. We got to ride. God needs it. God no. needs it. God needs it. And mm -hmm. so I just, I think back to that faith and that, that level of, oh, okay, have it back by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I was thinking of the disciples that were sent ahead. Um, you know, just uh, prior to this, uh, there was a conversation between uh, James and John, I think, about who, you know, they asked the Lord if they could be on the right and the left hand of God in paradise and all stuff. And our, in our sensible ears now, we look going, holy buckets, how could they even think to ask that? But they did. So anyway, perhaps it was those two disciples that were sent ahead on donkey duty. <laughs> you know, here they're asking to be elevated uh, up to where the Lord is and not just them. I think all the disciples probably had a little something of what's in it for me kind of thing. But Jesus sends them on donkey duty. Just go get the donkey. Um, was that humbling? I would think so, you know, but it's those little things that we do every day like that, 
that aren't the grandiose tasks or anything. Maybe just we're on donkey duty for the day, and that's good. That's that's what we need to be. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> Well, for, for me, the story is just so, you know, so familiar that, um, yeah, it's hard. And sometimes I forget the depth of the meaning and you see, you see Holy Week coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's part of that. That's part of that whole story. Um, and I always get this on Palm Sunday as I, there's always that little twinge in my stomach going, oh, mm -hmm. I know it's coming. Mm -hmm. I know it's coming. And, and sometimes it's easy to say it's Palm Sunday. Let's get through this so we can get to Easter mm -hmm. and to just yeah. not even hardly focus mm -hmm. on it. When, when the one verse that stood out to me this time that I really didn't focus on was the Pharisees that told them, teacher, get your disciples under control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I've never looked at really closely at that verse. And um, how many times have we been told, uh, you know, as a parent, get your kids under control. Thankfully, here at first, you know, we allow children to be themselves, but so often um, we're, we're told to fit into these molds. And as God's children, we don't fit into molds. Mm -hmm. God doesn't fit into a mold. Um, so I, I, I love I, I love that piece this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think sometimes in our churches, we're so busy being serious, we forget the joy. You know, and this is a day of, of joy and of praising and of, uh, you know, doing extravagant things, waving palms, putting coats on the road, just blessed is the name of the Lord. And there's that song, um, the joy of the Lord is my strength, which is scriptural. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, you know, we sing it, the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, we need joy. Uh, and uh, but it's hard to have that joy. Too, and like you talked about, Shelly, you know what's coming next. And I think so many of us, we experience Palm Sunday and then we experience Easter. And we forget what happens in that week in between. You know, we don't forget, but maybe we don't dwell on it as much as we should um, on what happens in that week. Yeah. The one thing that, the other thing that stood out to me is um, in the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version says, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Mm. And it doesn't say on earth. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Wow, yeah. It, it does, does in the message as well. Is that say that? Too? Yeah, because I think, mm -hmm. you know, we, we prayed for peace yesterday um, at staff. Um, and that that peace be in us so that we can live out God's peace. The peace isn't going to happen until Jesus returns. This is part of the, the whole story. Um, Good Friday, you know, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then Easter Sunday, and then we all have the ascension. And so you, you have that whole story, but that peace, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven, when Jesus comes back, that's, also, that's when we'll have peace on earth. Wow. Yeah. Great point, Shelley. We have peace point. is a peace. We try to live our, you know, we try to live out that peace. I think we strive and desire for that peace. Um, well, and the people were looking for Jesus to be the king that would overthrow. Mm -hmm. that would come and do a military takeover, you know, that would, and, and that's not what he came to do. You know, obviously when he came to die, he fulfilled his mission, but everybody, you know, the shock that everyone was in, because wait a minute, that's not the peace we were thinking. That's not a way to bring about peace. We need you to go in and overthrow and, and uh, upset and all that, uh, the worldly way in which people, kingdoms come into power is usually through coercion and force but that was obviously not jesus's way and they were a little taken aback by that that's not what they expected i think i think the other piece that really stands out for me today was um after the he the pharisees said the disciples take order 
And Jesus said, if they were silent, the stones would shut out. The stones Mm -hmm. goes back to the cornerstone. Um, You think about the times that stones were used, the stone to um, build the temple. Um, And I even found a rock that was in my desk drawer. It's a little pretty white polished rock. And and all I can think of is if this were to shout praise, to sing God's praise, it'd be like one of the Pixar cartoons, (laughs) you know, a little mouth would form on here. (laughs) How do how do stones shout out? Would that have been something to see? Is everything is praising God on this particular moment, a week before everyone's rebelling against God. Mm -hmm. A week later, everyone will be rebelling against God. Even a stone. How? How? I mean, I can look at the Rockies and go, wow, these are majestic. They're praising God with every little pebble up there. But the stones on the side of a road we are, that we step on, we're praising God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And of course, all of this was to fulfill the Uh, predictions of um, the Old Testament, where it says in Zechariah, see your king comes to you righteous and um, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, on the fallow of a donkey. And so I think a lot of times we maybe forget too that a lot of the Old Testament points to Christ. Uh, People say, I can't worship a God, the God of the Old Testament. Well, the God of the Old Testament, it's so much just pointing to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And uh, I understand that that it's hard, but um, that it, when you read the Old Testament through that lens of how does this point to Jesus, it helps. <laughs> so, I think one thing that connects to me when I, I, I hear those arguments too, is um, that the people of the Old Testament, the people of the Hebrew scripture, they were much more accustomed to the tragedy of their day. It was so commonplace seeing people get hurt, killed, maimed, injured. And even now, what I see in the last two months, last month, is that we're getting closer and closer to that awareness where we can't hide from the tragedy of Ukraine. We can't hide from all these things. We have cameras on the ground constantly updating us. We see turmoil, division, and hurt. And so now we're in a place where we also... We also live within that hurt. And so I think what I resonate with most, Laurie, with what you said is that this all points to Christ. This all points to Jesus. This all has a direction that we must follow. It's not just believers, but also voices of this faith. Mm -hmm. And so how do we draw people back to that? Prayer, love, and worship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, I would encourage all of us as we come into Holy Week and all of that to go to the Word. Um, also, maybe even watch different movies or shows or whatever that help us to experience that suffering and uh, everything that Christ went through uh, on Holy Week. And just let it permeate you and, and sit in it for a while. And then when you, that just makes the joy of Easter all the more sweet when you can sit in that pain of Holy week a little bit and not gloss over it, you know, but sit in it for a while. I like that, Laurie. It reminds me of imaginative prayer of reading it and putting yourself just inside that story. And like you said, just sitting with it and just seeing what the Holy spirit might bring up in you. Um, that's a connection just for, you know, for you. Mm-hmm. When you sit in deep pain, then your joy becomes even deeper as well, too. Because, um, yeah, I don't know. I just love Easter. I love Lent. I love Holy Week. I love Easter. Me too. <laughs> just, Me too. Yeah, good stuff. And I love to see the kiddos with their palms, waving them and uh, all that in church. Do you guys have a lot of memories of that as a child doing Palm Sunday? Or um, I don't really remember our church doing it, but. I remember, I'm, oh gosh, I must be elementary school. And we had a, a donkey and we all met outside all, we all gathered outside before we gathered inside and had um, the procession with 
all of us waving palms and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So that's a memory that stuck deep within me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Anything else from this text? Anybody want to lift up? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, taking the time, not only to watch this, but to be a part of it. And uh, I'm going to ask Babs if she will pray us out and then we will see you in church on Sunday. Babs. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time together. Lord, thank you for the words that you put before us, that we can look at the suffering that you went through. And as we feel pain in our daily lives, Lord, help us to realize that it points to you. Life is hard. And in all of it, Lord, you come shining through and you are our salvation. Help us all to see that and experience that this coming week, this coming Holy Week. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.